Hey friends, it's Daisy. Welcome to Stories for Kids. If this is your first time tuning in, welcome to our awesome world where exciting things happen. I would like to introduce you to the Who Done It series in the adventures of Attorney Malka fighting for the justice of her dollies. But first, would you like us to create an episode from your very own story idea? Choose from any of our special characters and send it to us. Check down in the show notes below for how easy it is, and then go to our website at daisyfrench.com. The Daisy French Podcast releases new stories every week. Why not take the five-day challenge? Parents, I invite you to listen with your kids to any of our stories for five days in a row. You would be amazed at how their imaginations are inspired, their desire for screen time decreases, and the oodles of fun they have along the way. In this episode, Marka and her dolly friends are going to prepare a special holiday dinner at a homeless shelter. But the occasion turns south when a wrongdoing is committed by one of Malka's dolly friends. What will she do? Are you ready to find out? Let's go. Hello? Daisy, it's attorney Malka. Hi, Malka. What's up? Not much. I wanted to let you know that today... We are going to visit a local homeless shelter to help prepare a holiday meal for all the people who live there. It would be really great if you could come with us. You want to go? OMG, I would love to go! It was a chilly December morning. Powdery snowflakes fell from the sky as Attorney Malka chatted on the phone with her good friend Daisy Dolly. Malka explained to Daisy that they would go with a couple of their other friends, Petunia Dolly and Rebecca Dolly. Daisy grew excited and curious about what this holiday dinner was all about. Malka and the doll girls wanted to help these less fortunate people who had no homes of their own and no families to be with during the holidays. This is why they lived in a homeless shelter. Attorney Malka and the dollies could spread some holiday cheer by preparing a delicious meal so that these less fortunate people could experience something very special. Well, Daisy Dolly thought this was such a wonderful plan that her friends were doing this, a real act of kindness, and replied to Malka, This is such a lovely idea. I would love to go. Wonderful! We'll all be together. In fact, we're leaving in an hour. Can you come to my house? Malka asked. Oh, I'll be there in a jiffy, replied Daisy. With that, the girls finished their call. Daisy had been to Malka's house many times and, in fact, lived just around the corner. So she scurried to get ready. As she headed out, Attorney Malka gathered her thickest coat, fluffiest scarf, and chunkiest boots, and then prepared a list of duties to help the dollies get organized since they had a full day ahead of them. The doorbell rang just as Malka was feeding her two cats, Boss Kitty and Jackie Clover, and giving the last snack to her small dog, Joselita. Malka greeted Daisy with a huge hug as the two were very close friends. Together, they walked toward the homeless shelter, which was not far from where they lived. It was quite a sight to witness a doll seemingly alive as she held hands with a human. Albeit, her walk was a bit stiff since she did not have joints like humans and animals. Heads always turned, for folks could not believe their eyes. But for Malka and Daisy, the friendship was as real as could be. Aww. They arrived just as Petunia Dolly and Rebecca Dolly approached. Hi. A Hi. round of warm hugs circled, as if Malka and the Dollies hadn't seen each other in ages. For a few moments, they chatted quietly amongst themselves yeah. before entering the shelter. Yeah. 
Naturally, the dollies were quite girly in their own individual ways and enjoyed observing each other's appearances. As the girls entered, they were quickly surrounded by disheveled people, some with alarming appearances. A lot of them didn't look very healthy, and most wore shabby clothes that did not fit well and were dirty. Some did not appear to be very clean and were even a bit stinky. But there were those who smiled at the girls with kindness in their eyes, and that was the gesture that touched them the deepest. Attorney Malka and her dolly friends could tell that these people were quite poor, which made their hearts ache. The disturbing conditions of these homeless people made Malka and her friends feel bad, and yet they all welcomed the girls with kind greetings, which caused them to realize how lucky they were to have their families and live in nice, stable homes. The girls were touched and eager to create a holiday memory that these people deserved and would remember. Making their way into the kitchen in the back of the building, they found a large two-door refrigerator, a couple of massive sinks, and tons of counter space and appliances. This kind of feels like we're in a restaurant kitchen, exclaimed Petunia Dolly. Wow, we're gonna be cooking for a lot of people, expressed Rebecca. Attorney Malka exclaimed to her dolly friends, Let's get busy, dollies. We've got a lot of cooking to do. Cooking was one of Malka's hobbies, even at the young age of eight. Jeepers, she was whiz in the kitchen and could cook her mother under the table with any of her amazing culinary creations. When she wasn't busy cooking up solutions to drama situations with her dolly friends, she was in the kitchen experimenting with new recipes. That's why her eyes practically popped out of her head when she opened the refrigerator for she saw so many yummy ingredients. There were all sorts of plump vegetables, wow. colorful fruits, aromatic herbs, blocks of tofu, beans, and bottles of sauce to prepare an incredible meal. Malka couldn't believe that so many generous people in the neighborhood had donated all this food to the shelter. Aww. Dollies, you won't believe this, Malka said as she ushered the doll girls over to the refrigerator. Do you dollies know what amazing dishes we can prepare with all these incredible <gasps> ingredients? Then, Malka and the dollies carefully removed all the food items from the refrigerator to begin preparations for the festive holiday meal. Daisy Dolly washed veggies in the massive sink, while Petunia Dolly chopped fruits and nuts and shredded cheese. Malka began to mix and sizzle ingredients on the stovetop that released an irresistible aroma of home cooking, love, and generosity. One by one, some of the folks shyly approached and asked if they could help with the preparations. Attorney Malka could tell that they were not accustomed to such generosity. Madame, all this cooking is splendid. What can I do to help? Malka had completely forgotten that she brought with her an assortment of holiday decorations. So naturally, it was a perfect way to engage the people there at the shelter. Quite timidly, a very tall, bony man, who seemed quite hungry, asked Malka, What can I do to help, little lady? Oh, <laughs> would you mind placing all these utensils and baskets around the main table in the dining area? Why, certainly, little lady, replied the bony man. Malka gathered heaps of forks, knives, spoons, napkins, and plates and handed them over to him. Another person approached the dollies. 
Dearies, we are so thankful to have you here with us and appreciate all that you are doing. We don't have much, but your generosity and care make us feel so special. An elderly lady, limping with a cane, grasped Daisy's arm and claimed, My dear Dolly, who in heaven's name sent you to us? I'm Helga. You remind me of my daughter when she was a young girl. I haven't seen her in ages. Thank you. Both Maka and Daisy noticed that the lady was not surprised that Daisy was in fact a living dolly. <gasps> then Helga helped attorney Maka prepare all the containers in the cafeteria section so that when the food was finally ready, it would stay nice and warm for the entire evening. Attorney Malka then walked back into the kitchen and instructed the other dollies what to do. Dollies, it's time to prepare the rest of the dishes because they might take some time to bake. However, upon opening the refrigerator, Malka noticed that one of the big brown grocery bags that contained the most important ingredients was missing. She closed the refrigerator and looked everywhere for any sign of the misplaced bag. She looked on the countertops, on the stovetop, in the sinks, and even on the floor. She noticed that Daisy and Petunia were still very busy preparing ingredients, yet she did not find the brown bag. No. She replayed the day's activities since their arrival at the shelter. And suddenly, it occurred to her that Rebecca Dolly was nowhere to be found. She thought that was very odd. Concerned, she quickly walked back into the kitchen and asked Daisy and Petunia, Have you Dolly seen Rebecca? To which the dollies replied, Why, no, we have not seen her. Attorney Malka continued to question the dollies. Have either of you seen the big brown bag that contains the main ingredients? But the dollies were so distracted, shopping and cooking, that they replied almost in unison. No, we haven't seen it. Where could it be? I'll be back in a jiffy, claimed Malka. She threw on her coat and scarf left the dollies in the kitchen and ran outside wondering where could Rebecca Dolly have gone? Now, Attorney Malka was in fact an attorney, which meant that she was quite accustomed to digging into situations, asking questions, mm. and solving mysteries and problems. Growing more and more suspicious, she asked herself, how can I find the missing brown bag? Why is Rebecca Dolly also missing? Doesn't make sense. Malka suspected that there might be a connection between Rebecca and the missing brown bag. She certainly did not want to pass judgment against her Dolly friend unless she had proof. If Rebecca Dolly had stolen the brown bag of ingredients, it was her duty to make it right. Not sure what to do next, Attorney Malka followed a tiny voice inside that told her to walk down the block toward her home. Surprisingly, she noticed Rebecca Dolly walking in front of her. It seemed that Rebecca was carrying something bulky causing her to walk in an awkward sort of way. Stepping up her pace, Malka thought to herself, Oh dear, please Rebecca Dolly, I hope you haven't stolen the brown bag, because that's a bad thing to do. Within seconds, Malka was right behind Rebecca Dolly no! and cried out to her darling friend, Rebecca? Is it you? Startled, Rebecca twirled around at the sound of Attorney Malka's voice. <gasps> In a split second, 
Marco witnessed that Rebecca Dolly was in fact carrying a big brown bag. And it looked identical to the one that had been in the refrigerator. In fact, Rebecca was so taken aback that she dropped the bag. Oh my, out rolled oranges, tomatoes, grapes, cheeses, nuts, cakes, and more. And many of the items rolled into the street. The girls gasped. <gasps> in a matter of seconds, a car drove by and ran over everything. Splats. Even a delicious chocolate cake was now a flattened pile of smooshy frosting. The attorney and the dolly looked at each other in shock. They were both devastated. Neither knew what to do in that awkward moment. Rebecca, because she had been caught red-handed stealing, and Marka, because she had witnessed her dear dolly friend in the act of stealing. Now they did not have all the necessary ingredients they needed to complete their holiday dinner. <laughs> but before attorney Malka could say a word, Rebecca Dolly confessed. Oh, Malka, I am so sorry. I was going to give the brown bag to my parents because they don't have the money to buy food for our holiday dinner. As much as she cared about her parents, Rebecca felt guilty as tears swelled in her eyes. In that moment, the young, compassionate attorney Malka felt bad for her dolly friend, but she also realized that stealing is wrong, no matter the reason, and that the situation needed to be corrected. Rebecca Dolly, I'm really sorry for your family's struggles, but that brown bag was not yours to take. It was for the people at the homeless shelter. Now we don't have the ingredients we need to complete the dinner. What do you think we can do to make this right? To which Rebecca Dollar replied, I know, maybe we can walk down to the supermarket and I can use my allowance to buy the same ingredients and return them to the shelter. That is such a great idea. I am so proud of you, Daisy, praised Malka. And though Rebecca had learned a valuable lesson, attorney Malka felt sad that her dolly friend might have to spend her hard-earned allowance to replace the ingredients that she had stolen. Yes, it was a lesson learned in doing the right thing, but it also strengthened their friendship as Rebecca had Malka's full support. Oh, Rebecca, I feel bad for you and your family. I had no idea but I want to help. So, since you are willing to replace the brown bag, I will take some of my allowance and buy some fruits and veggies to give to you and your family for your Thanksgiving dinner. Touched by Malka's generous offer, Rebecca Dolly gave Attorney Malka a huge hug and cried, Oh, thank you, Attorney Malka. You really are such a dear friend. Once back at the shelter, carrying two big brown bags, one for the homeless and the other for Rebecca Dolly's family, the other dollies curiously asked, Where have you, Where have you two been? been? Malka and Rebecca looked at each other in a moment of silence. Not wanting to embarrass her friend, attorney Malka quickly replied, We went to the supermarket to purchase ingredients for Rebecca's family holiday dinner. Before the other dollies could ask more questions, Attorney Malka claimed, Quick, dollies, we need to prepare the rest of the meal. Who knows best what spices to use? Knowing very well that both Daisy and Petunia would jump at the chance. I do! I do! Replied the dolls. Ha ha, great! Cried Attorney Malka. Daisy and I will finish preparing the rest of the food. A few hours later, the cafeteria was overflowing with the yummiest cuisine they had ever prepared. The delicious aroma filled the air as the homeless people lined up for the best meal they had eaten in a long time. Smiling and chatting with the girls, these nice folks thanked them repeatedly as Malka and the dollies filled their plates to the rim. The End 
Thanks for listening to our first episode in the Who Done It series about the adventures of Attorney Malka fighting for the justice of her dollies. Are you a problem solver who comes up with creative solutions? Would you stick up for a good friend even if they did something that was not right? Well, stay tuned for Attorney Malka's next adventure when she goes to Washington, D.C. to solve a major problem with one of her Dolly friends at, you guessed it, the White House. So go ahead and subscribe to get notifications about more stories in the Who Done It series about the adventures of Attorney Malka. And don't forget to tell your friends. See you again soon.